all right guys so welcome to the news video i will show you now how to create a game a very classic game in unity which is obviously as you can see probably from the uh, ultimate pro footage uh, i'm showing you will be creating snake in unity and as a matter of fact the game is very simple to play However, its creation, it, it is, the creation is also simple. Uh, however, some um, execution of some particular methods might not be as obvious as you would think. So, however, don't worry, bear with me. I will explain everything step by step. We'll create it from scratch so that you can you know, be proud of your small project of creating this uh, classical uh, gem of a game. Yeah, I mean, this game is quite nice. All right, so I begin with creating a new project. I'll choose the latest version of Unity I have. I'll call the project Snake, obviously. I'll choose the 3D template. All right, so first of all, we'll set the scene view to 2D and change the main camera uh, background rendering option to, uh, to solid color. So clear flux to solid color and then I choose um, blackish, dark gray, very dark gray, not solid black. So in the game view, we'll have this uh, nearly, uh, nearly black background. And obviously, I will start with creating a prefab for our snake, which will be a 3D object. I will use basic cube shape for making a, a part of our snake. I'll call it, uh, let's call it car. So I will use the terminology of uh, train industry. So, uh, a, so cars or wagons so cars will make up a train this uh, in this particular example so first of all let's make this uh, snake piece a little bit smaller than one so I'll put zero nine zero nine zero nine everywhere and the reason for that uh, will be explained in a bit we can already see it however when you go to main camera we need to change the i mean i want to change the projection to orthographic so that i can see everything uh, as it would be a ideal 2d scene let's create an empty object let's call it game manager and let's add a component i will name main logic and obviously it will store all the logic about um, about the game. Wait for it to load. You can open it in Visual Studio. So we'll use this uh, two window side by side view because uh, I already have a quite high resolution and this way we'll see both code and the game view. All right. So first of all, let's have a few variables that will tweak the, the game. First of all, the most uh, important variable will be a timer or a value for a timer, which will determine how frequently the snake should move. Because as you remember, the snake moves autonomously. However, the player can only specify the direction in which the snake moves and the moving is happening once every set period of time, for example, one second, or even uh, less frequently, like two seconds, and the frequency is being increased as the game progresses, so as the player uh, scores more and more points. So let's um, make a public uh, float, set it to be timer value, Let's set it to two for the time being. And the, in the update method, first of all, we will uh, 
calculate the tick. All right, and let's make yet another helper value, public float timer equals to zero. And this, uh, and also let's create a bool value. And this don't have to be public, as a matter of fact, I don't want it to be public. Let's make at the very beginning a bool value of is post and set it to false. Or maybe no. Uh, yes, is post to false. And now we'll check, first of all, if it's not false. Uh, sorry, if it's not paused, then we'll calculate everything that's happening in, inside the game. So at the very beginning, we uh, should have a possibility to stop the game altogether, just for the you know, debugging and uh, playtesting purposes, because that's uh, way easier to implement at the very beginning rather than later. Right now, let's uh, create this timer method. So we'll just go with if. So we check if the timer, the current timer is uh, bigger than timer value. And if it is, we'll go with tick method. All right. We need to implement it, obviously. It will show, it will throw not implementation error, but we don't care about it. And else, so if it's, sorry, if it's not bigger, then we will increase it. Um, by the value of timer time dot delta time so every update will increase it so at, at the very beginning let's go with debug log not log error but log go with tick right and also when the tick is being implemented we obviously need to set the timer to zero all right, and in the start method, let's reset. Res sorry, in the start method, let's reset the timer uh, to be zero as well. And and obviously we need to set the timer to zero every time. We want to tick because we need to reset the timer and also let's reset the timer inside the start method. All right, let's save it. Go into our little game view and let's uh, hit play. And as you can see, every two seconds more or less because it's not particularly and uh, it's not ideally uh, precise however more or less every two seconds the tick is being executed and right now what we want to do is move the move our snake however to move our snake we first need to create it so we create a game object we call it snake and here we make snake logic I like to use this logic um, naming method all right we create the snake logic and snake logic mm, we don't need that he will create a public uh, void move snake method all right and also here we will uh, here we will specify the uh, list, uh, public list of car logic, and car logic will be this particular segment. No, sorry, I'll, let's call it segment logic. Yeah, car was funny, but and uh, let's call it body, and one particular. Uh, one particular game object or segment object uh, we'll call it head because the only the head can collect um, apples items points however it's called and uh, on the car 
let's rename it to segment. Uh, let's add segment script. All right, hold on. Why should I hold on? So right now we open segment. Here, let's delete this and let's create a method called public void move. All right, not on move, but just move. And here we will move the segment in the direction of the flow and the direction of the flow will be uh, taken from the snake logic so we will we want to get the vector to direction uh, yes and we want to move the game object to transform position equals to We'll copy it. No, we saw say new vector two, so we'll vector three, and we'll close it. And we'll do something like this. So it will be um, some x, some y, some z value. All right. As a matter of fact, z value in this game will not change. All right, as you can see, the, the only change uh, we notice when shifting the Z value is that at some particular point, uh, it's minus 10, I believe. No, minus nine. Uh, the, the game object goes behind or in front of the camera, so it will be or will not be rendered. But generally all the movement will happen on the Y and X axis. All right, so only those two will alter and the Z one will stay at zero for the convenience. And at X, we will take the previous position. All right, and we'll just increase it by the direction and uh, direction point X, obviously, and here also point X. And the same will happen on Y, which will change here and here. And right now, if we move the, all right, so let's save it. And we go back to our snake logic. The move snake will iterate through all of those segments. So through all the body. So first of all, we'll move head, move, and then and we need to pass the vector, which we need to be specified here, public vector free uh, direction. We need to pass this vector here. And then we go with for each loop, not for, but for each loop. And we'll iterate through every segment. And uh, we'll call it uh, piece, all right? So every piece in body, so it will go through every piece, every element of the body uh, list, and it will move it using this move uh, function. So we we'll just will use piece dot move and pass the direction again. And that's actually more or less everything apart from the fact that we need uh, two more uh, pieces of intelligence or lo game logic and one will be changing or getting the change in the directions which will go in and uh, cover in the update method but before we do that let's set the direction to be for example new vector um, 0 0.1 point 0 and in the main logic calculate the tick in every tick we want to but we need an obviously public uh, reference to the snake logic snake and here we'll go with snake dot move snake all right and generally this will be this will equal to zero 
However, we need to declare a new list of the type uh, segment. Let's move it to the start. No, it's okay. So right now, what we need to do, we go to this uh, game manager. Here, the snake logic will drag this snake. And here in the snake, let's reset the position of the snake. Let's uh, move the car to be a child object of the snake. All right. So right now, whenever we change, I mean, the snake will not change the position itself. However, it will just, it's easier to uh, deal it deal with it this way and right now when we uh, we need to go to the snake and put the car as the head all right and the body is empty it doesn't uh, there is no element of none which is fine Start method. Let's go with body clear. So adding this little function will make sure that at the every start, this list will be cleared of every element and will it will have no elements here. Uh, so when we start. It is ticking. Move snake, head move direction. Go to segment, game object. Oh, the direction here is set to zero zero for some reason. Right now, let's hit play again. And the snake is moving. Every two seconds, it moves. And if we add more elements, so let's copy this one and let's set it to, for example, be one. No, sorry, not one, but minus one. And here minus two. And the reason I wanted to create them all smaller than one so zero nine is because now we'll see the shape of the snake better oh my not this one so i pause the game i set the list to be two to to have two elements and i drag and drop those two segments and now when i hit play you can see that all of them are running however we want to create all those procedurally and uh, we'll do that by and we'll do that by introducing uh, first of all let's introduce a direction method because this direction should be possible it should be possible to change the direction uh, during the game obviously so we go with update and then let's just check whether the player has pressed some buttons for example WASD that would be the easiest uh, the most straightforward so if input dot get key down and key code W then the current direction will equal to and uh, it will be this one because this is moving up now we'll go with else if direction equals to minus one now else if and else if again and he will go with zero 
but this one will be one. Oh, sorry, not this one. So it will be a. Now with, no, sorry, it will, it will be, at, this one will be s. This one will be a, and this one will be d. However, when it comes to a and d, we need to change y to x. just like this and right now let's go have a look how our snake is behaving it is going up when I press a it is going right so obviously I have mistakenly set the values on the particular axis I always do that don't worry All right, so it goes up when I set the, let's go to the snake. So there's this direction when I press A, it now has value minus one, it goes to the left. When I press D, it goes to the right. When I press S, it goes to the, uh, it goes down, it goes down. Right now, what we want to do is we want to um, have the possibility to spawn um, segments uh, when reaching a point however first of all we need to create a method that will spawn a point uh, at particular place in the world so first of all let's create a public point uh, game object it will be a point prefab right let's call it point prefab and let's have a all right have a point prefab but also let's create a values that will set the size of the playing ground so we'll go with public float uh, or public int rather um, it will say game width and uh, let's set it to I don't know, 230 and uh, game height. Let's set it to 20. For the time being, we can all obviously change those later. And let's save it. And uh, let's create a method public void spawn point. And let's first have an int of um, position int position x and it will be a random value so we'll use the random however right now uh, it uses the system dot random which is not it's just exactly opposite to what i want uh, i want to use unity uh, engine random however i don't want to i don't know sometimes it just has this uh, little bug that it, uh, Visual Studio wants uh, you to choose one uh, reference or another. So let's let's just use this uh, line using random equals to Unity Engine dot random. So it will be placed here, and then anytime you use random function, uh, it will be obviously chosen the right one, the the better for this approach. So random dot range function. And we want to go with minus uh, position x, it will be world height. Uh, no, no, not world, but game, uh, sorry, game width to plus game width. So it will just choose randomly some value between this one and this one. Uh, so in this sense, I need to change it to be, no, it will just um, tweak those values in a moment. Now, position y, be the same however we'll set it to game height one here one here and we just want to instantiate the prefab the prefab the point prefab and we want to pass the uh, not transform parent but vector position and the position will be new vector free 
and as y will pass position sorry as x will pass position x as y will pass position y and as z will pass zero and we need to just set a new a uh, new quaternion and without uh, going into details will pass four zeros here and i promise it will work this way no question asked obviously uh, hopefully all right so now we need to create a this uh, point prefab and point prefab will be yet another cube however this time we will uh have it obviously we need to reset the position of it for some for some place and let's make it a bit smaller like 0.5 all right uh, just to distinguish those two things let's create two materials the first material will be point and second second will be uh, snake head and as a matter of fact i will create a third one call it snake uh, segment all right so the point will apply to the point all right let's uh, rename it to point there's this uh, point material being applied right now let's change the color to yellowish i think it would be nice snake head let's set as uh maybe green dark green and segment will be light green all right so the snake will be this yeah that would be cool all right so first of all let's create this point as a prefab so i drag and drop it into the uh, project window and now i can delete it but it's it is still here i will duplicate the car call it segment and the car will i will name head and the segment i will attach uh, this another uh, another material let's duplicate duplicate it two times to see yeah it looks kind of don't judge me okay but the, the point is uh, i just wanted to distinguish the head from the from other segments so let's delete them and in game manager let's assign the point uh, to be the point prefab i just i need to uh, go back and have this segment be saved as a prefab now i can delete it uh, now going back to game manager let's assign the, the point prefab here and in the snake uh yeah so now let's save this one and at main logic at start let's uh, create a, a method that will spawn uh, this point so we are spawning point at the very start of the game all right let's wait let's hit play and the point is indeed spawned and uh, don't worry about the game view being like small like this because it's this free aspect and it is because the window is uh, being uh, displayed only on the half of the screen now let's go to the camera mm, and let's uh, lock the aspect and when it comes to size if the size is okay for you but i believe it it's not i believe it's not let's set it to 10 and right now when we move the snake to 10 to 15 to 16 six, sorry to 16 to 17 17 is still okay zero and on the y-axis the maximum of the borderline will be 10 
So let's go to the game manager and let's set the game width to 17 and the game height to 10. And this way we'll be always, we'll always create a snake uh, inside those boundaries uh, of the game window. I mean, not the snake, sorry, the point. The point. Right now when we hit play, we have the point being spawned here and our snake is here. Let's go to it. Let's create a public int or public static, no, public int score equals to zero at the very beginning. And let's set it to reset to zero. So we need a reference to game logic, public game, let's call it main logic, main logic. And here, first of all, main logic and score, we increase the score by one, that's one thing. Another is we spawn a point. So it will spawn another point. And as a matter of fact, we can run the game this way. However, however, uh, let's not here. Uh, here, main logic, we need to drag and drop this game manager object and here in game manager object let's increase the speed to some high value like 0 0.5 so it will go quite fast I believe and right now let's go catch this little thingy oh but we didn't set the uh, the tags and here we'll create a method that will check whether we have collided with a point. So we'll go with public uh, public bool has collided and here we will pass nothing but we will uh, return true if so first we'll check so if the position uh, tr if transform position equals to something we need to add here so we'll create a public static vector two we call it uh, point position and maybe let's set it to vector 3 and here in spawn point after we instantiate or just before we instantiate doesn't really matter let's uh, have this um, point position equal to uh, new vector 3 and it will be position x position y and 0 so this way we don't have to create a new vector of position here you can just pass this point point position it will achieve exactly the same thing but we have the reference so now in the segment uh, we check whether the transform position equals to main logic dot point position and if it does and if it does then we return true and else we return not render return false all right and here in snake logic, whenever we move snake after moving direction, we check head dot has collided. It does check. Uh, however, this piece checks if we have collided with uh, with point. All right, and uh, the next part will be checking whether the piece have collided with 
uh, any segment, but we'll create a new uh, function for this uh, in a moment. So right now we check whether has collided happened. If it's true, we, we don't just call it. We go with if has collided because if true, then we want the main logic to uh, no, sorry, we call get point. Yeah, we call get point and everybody's happy. So let's save it and we go. Oh, not this. Oh, and we have collided with the piece. However, it didn't destroy the one, it just spawned another. And uh, right now, this one doesn't count as the point anymore. Just this one is being stored in the memory uh, as the, the one we need to go to. And uh, somewhere, it was spawned somewhere outside the range, I think. Oh, yeah, so somewhere outside. Maybe minus 10 was too much. Are the cameras shifted? All right, so a few things to tweak. First of all, we need to change the position of camera to zero. I mean, we don't have to, but we should. Let's set it to nine. This one, this way it will be fine. Also here in get point, let's destroy the, the point object. And the most easy way is to store the information about the point here as a public game object. Uh, current point we'll just set the current point to be equal to this one save it and go to our snake logic and here after um, hitting the main logic this changing the score and everything we want to destroy so we call destroy function what destroy and we pass the, or as, as a matter of fact, let's go and do it in the spawn point fact, uh, method. So before creating new one, let's make sure we destroy the point uh, or current point dot, yeah, current point, just like this. We set it and uh, But at the very beginning, we don't want to uh, destroy the point. So then we need to do some trick like this. Instead of calling this function, let's pass this uh, little thingies. And right now it will work just fine. Let's play start. We have created a piece here. And it is being destroyed and uh, another one is spawned. And when we go to game manager, we can see that the score is being increased by one piece at a time. All right, so right now we want to spawn a new piece every time we eat a point all right kind of obvious uh, everybody has played snake I, I think before i did at least i hope you did as well all right so there are a few ways to do that obviously there are always a few ways to do that the the two main schools of thought is are like this the first one we create a coroutine that will check whether the whole snake body has moved through the point position and then create a new segment at the end of the snake. And uh, quite easier and more accessible way is to just spawn a, a new segment of the body at the very beginning of the, uh, of the snake. So let's, for example, imagine that this is our head, obviously, there is this point and the head goes into the point 
and after it leaves the point here in this place the segment will be created all right so if we had already uh, one segment so those two when they move they go one round and on the other round they will not go like this but instead the head will move here this one will stay and the another segment will be put and spawned here this way the new piece will always be spawned at the very first place in this uh, segment list which is quite convenient to be honest and all right so let's delete all of those let's reset all the position let's hit save for the safe purposes uh, and so whenever we get a point we spawn a point but we also want to spawn a new uh, segment so let's have this spawn segment method we need to obviously implement it I don't right I remember do not throw the unimplemented exception I, I remember to do that Jesus all right so um, we have the position of the point somewhere at least so let's create uh, let's have uh, why we want to as you remember when we spawn the point the new position will be assigned to the point position all right so before calling this method we can still spawn a segment using information uh, uh, set here point position before because it may happen that uh, for example you catch two points at the same time and in such uh, in such case um, there will be some errors but doing it this way uh, will save us from those uh, possible errors and bugs all right so without further ado let's just first of all instantiate uh, so now let's create a segment uh, segment uh, segment uh, thing let's call it piece segment object Jesus I forgot the word all right so let's uh, call a segment object and let's now instantiate uh, let's say something like this it was instantiate instantiate what uh, segment no we need the public uh, public game object and segment prefab yeah we want to instantiate segment prefab and will pass us the will pass the point position all right as the, the position so we go with main logic point position and as a bool uh, what it's no it's a quaternion uh, quaternion and we'll pass zero 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 no question asked all right let's close the deal and what is wrong with you boy oh yeah new quaternion obviously excuse me Oh yeah and it's a piece of a segment so we need to get component of the type segment all right so it's quite a lengthy function but it instantiates the this game the segment prefab assigns its position to point position and then grabs the segment piece of this uh, prefab and assign it assigns it to this uh, object so right now we can go with list uh, no sorry not list we can go with body 
add and we add this piece and actually that's that's it to be honest because right now uh, whenever we move our snake everything will move one piece at a time so yeah that should do the trick however there is one more thing we need to do because uh, right now every piece is moving in the same direction but what we want to do is we want to have the pieces move in um, you know the direction that were previously uh, equal to the movement of those of the head yeah so because right now when we hit play oh we don't have a sign oh, we have a sign so the segment prefab will be this one this little fella all right so let's eat some berries and let's see what what you can achieve bam and it, it's nice but the, there is this little problem that uh, actually it is uh, as you can see everything is moving like it's a big blob everything is connected to one another so w all right bear with me so right now when we go no i remove this step right now notice where the new piece is being created here because it is created here and it immediately moves so that's one thing to deal with and another is that it should obviously all of them should follow you know this uh, snaky tail like behavior so okay but before we go into spawning let's just get that out of the picture let's first um, deal with moving of all of Jesus all of those you know snake pieces and to do that we need a new list a second list I mean it is not needed required per se but it would be a lot of easier if we did it this way so we'll just go with vector free uh, sorry no I will go with list and it will be a list of vector freeze it will be position positions Let's say it's a new vector free list all right and whenever we spawn something we spawn a segment we want to add uh No, and also we want to have a public integer variable. We call it a snake size. Set it to zero for the time being. And uh, any time we move, so actually it will be in this segment section. Any time we move, we want to check. Uh, first of all. No, sorry, it's not this one. Uh, it's in the update. No, it's not here. Uh, good. Anytime we move, so this position is actually a new position of our head, and we want to add this position to the uh, to this list at the very end because it will mean that the very first body of this uh, very first segment of the body will go to this position all right so we we'll have a list of positions of our previous movement uh, because when we look at the uh, let's go to the scene view for the moment so it's actually pretty straightforward no not this one no uh, we put segment here we put segment here we put segment here so we've got 
right now what we want to have is four pieces of uh, positions so in this vector free list this will be the first one this will be second third fourth because anytime we move the snake we want this way this uh, head to go in some direction we want uh, using this uh, this update and checking the direction which we'll need to modify uh, whether we can move in that direction because for example from here we cannot move uh, using s key to go down all right so we'll have to to check whether we can move in that direction but we'll deal with that in a moment so and uh, when we say move up uh, we want this piece to go into previous position so we'll go move piece number zero so segment of the body number zero will move to uh, position number uh, actually it will be the last one so uh, yeah let's say three this one will move to position two no, sorry this will position two this will go to position number one this will go to position zero so here and etc will move the snake and uh, every frame or every every tick uh, rather all right so uh we want to uh, we want to stay that if the main not main snake dot size is bigger than zero or maybe no there are three uh, three conditions first of all the snake size uh, snake dot snake size equals to zero and actually nothing happens then we can state that if snake size is bigger than zero and snake dot positions dot length or count uh, if the count is smaller than snake dot snake size why it's lagging hmm. all right so if that happens so if the uh, first of all if the snake is big enough to have some pieces and there are less positions or fewer positions sorry uh, in our position uh, list than the snake size would suggest then we need to add so we go with snake uh, position add and we'll add our uh, game object that position however it will be else if uh, however if contrary happens so uh, the snake size is bigger than zero but the count is equal it it will it should never be bigger uh, if it's equal then we need to add all right but also we want to uh, positions to remove at first of all we say remove at zero uh, and that's it so we remove an item that's stored at the zero index and every thing every item in this list is then re-indexed so that the position array once it hits the number uh, that's uh, like uh, specified by the snake size then it will stay at this size no matter what and uh, one more thing we can remove this one all right and let's make a bool public bool is head let's set it to false and and that's uh, it but 
if is head. All right, let's do something like this. So that all of this stuff will be checked and you know tempered with only if we are checking the head segment, not all the, or not the whole snake per se. All right. So first of all, let's go to the before we forget. Let's go to the segment, and the segment should have its head not checked, and the head should have its head checked. <laughs> yeah, it sounds trivial and obvious, but you know, uh, it's good to have it clarified this way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we can move every piece in some direction. And the directions uh, don't have to be stored here, so we'll just, you know, we'll remove this, and uh, we'll create a new function. Oh, we just don't have to create any function. As a matter of fact, we can just assign the transform position and set it to positions. And here we would pass an index. And what index we want to pass? That's kind of a, a nice question, if you ask me. So if the piece, for the first piece in the second body, we want the last position. Because the last position. Uh, I don't know, it's actually not, not, not like this. So we'll go with piece, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. So we go with piece. Uh, no, we go, sorry, with body, index off, and we pass piece. Yep, and that's it, actually. So we just say, what's the index? of this item, piece item, in the body list. It says, for example, it's uh, index three. So we say, okay, let's move this piece to the position st number three, starting this list. It doesn't really matter which segment we move where, because they are all the same. It would matter if there needed to be some kind of, you know, sprite rotation or something, but it can be dealt with, uh, separately and in this um, easy example we even don't do that so we don't even do that so yeah we could just you know forget about this whole uh this whole conversation let's imagine let's pretend this conversation never happened yeah that would be good for me and for you as well all right so uh we can move the pieces which is fine and right now let's say that we spawn a segment all right and let's delete this okay so in the snake head we need to assign the snake head uh, we need to make it public for some reason i mean i know why but well, it doesn't matter all right so after it updates we can drag and drop bam and it's nice all right let's ah forgot that everything is working on the premise that we do not move the head from the original position I should reset it uh, index was out of range we need to increase the snake size at some point so uh, here point position obviously snake size snake dot snake size or we can get it here so in snake logic in get point before we spawn let's say snake size plus plus all right 
and now go. So let's check it by setting the body, not body, but snake size to five, let's say. So the positions will should be set every frame. And as you can see, they are being set properly. Now we eat something and it follows our tail. However, it starts from the from the very back. Uh, this is because I I have created uh, you know those five positions at the very beginning to to test the feature that was uh, obviously working wonders. So let's uh, start with one position. Let's set it to go. Ah, sorry, not one position, one snake size. Why didn't you remind me of my mistake? Come on, what are you guys for? No, just kidding. You guys are awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, whenever we now eat something, we do create a new piece segment body. However, there is this little bug which annoys me is that the segment is being uh, created on the top of the head. So the head is like, huh. actually, there is nothing wrong with, you know, eating own body. Uh, but first of all, let's uh, go to our head. And let's make head bigger a bit. That will be the most easy. Now it's just now it's not good. It's not good. Where is this fucking layer? Yeah, let's make the head bigger a bit. All right, that's one thing. So whenever we now run the game, uh, we want to go and eat this little piece of a candy. Let's call it candy for the time, shall we? Right now we can see that Actually, I, I don't like how that's uh, uh, not centered at all. Huh. Ah, it's just my all right, everything is working fine. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. And as you can see, we can move the snake in every direction, which is, uh, well, we shouldn't be capable of moving uh, the snake in the direction that uh, would result in it going through itself. So we'll, we'll deal with that right now. So first of all, in every every time we need to check if the most recent position, so the if position, positions off, and we need to pass uh, the positions count minus one so for example if the count is okay wait a moment really if the positions have of if the list posi named positions has five items then count would be five then the last index would be four so five minus one so if the pos new position equals two equals two 
and right now uh, if it equals to what or maybe yeah if it equals to uh, snake logic sorry it's not this one no it is this one uh, if it equals to what and the last position should be head all right so if it equals to head dot game object dot uh, transform dot position plus this new little fellow so if the po current position plus the uh, new change in the movement if it would result into going in the previous position then we cannot do that so only if it does not equal all right we can assign this new direction so we can do it this way everywhere on oh, its full screen for a moment this time it will go minus one right this will be minus uh, zero here one here zero here all right and now we can maximize the game window for the maximum game experience I mean it's a I doubt it's a nice experience but whatever all right let's play this little fellow so much emotions all right and now we can still do that for some reason so the head is at position 7 1 and the first element is at position 7 1 So let's do it other way. Uh, sorry, it will not be count minus one, but minus two, because we want to check the last but one position. But checking the last but one position uh, requires us to check whether the size, uh, the snake size is uh, greater than you know two. That would be the fastest way to do that. So let's just cut this out. Let's add a new if if uh, snake size is bigger than two or greater than two or greater than one, actually. Then we paste all this code and if else, then we paste it again. However, we can now delete all this uh, bullshit uh, if uh, statements so this one will ap will be applied only if we have small snake whatever that is supposed to mean and so the size of one and uh, anytime else anytime else it will be this code that's being executed so let's go and check how it does work Mm 
being uh, now I cannot go up I can go down uh, now let's eat this little fellow okay I cannot change the direction to down I'm pressing S as you can probably hear you cannot see it you have to believe me uh, and if you are following the tutorials so far without any random mistake or I don't know cut going through your keyboard to press uh, some keyboard buttons and change some stuff in your code uh, against your will then you should be fine and you should have your little piece of a game working just like mine shown on the on the device you are watching this tutorial on all right so well what do we want else to do we could check whether we have lost uh, by checking if we collided with a piece of uh, our own body and to do that let's uh, do another uh, method this time we'll call it not has collided or maybe let's rename this one has eaten uh, where was this let's rename it uh, has collected point and here we'll create a public bool has collided oh, Jesus. and it will be a vector free we pass here let's call it this way and let's do something like this So yeah, if those are equal, then true. And as a matter of fact, we don't have to do this way. We can check is collided or has collided. So we'll make a more generic function and we'll pass a main logic dot point position here, get point, and then after assigning after assigning a piece of the body let's check this one again let's put it here but instead of main logic point position we'll pass a new piece dot transform dot position all right and if it's true because that's what we want to do. If it's true, then we lost. Uh, so let's say like uh, we can set the main logic. Main logic uh, is paused or po uh, how it was called. Uh, is yeah, is paused. Huh. It should be made to public. Set it is passed to true, uh, not true, but true. This way, uh, this won't matter. Uh, the tick will not be called anymore. So that's a kind of good indication for the player that they have lost. So let's play. All right, and uh, all right, we need to uh, skip one first iteration. So first or last, uh, if. So let's add a second condition here. It will check whether we have, uh, we don't want to check the first position, uh, sorry, the last position in our positions tab because uh, 
because obviously after eating a point will we can say it has collided so we can never collide with the last position i mean the previous position yeah so so the last position so we need to check that it we are not checking the last position as a matter of fact so it does not equal body dot uh, count minus one all right all right so it does not collide with the first segment it should never collide with the first segment and uh, actually you cannot lose the game in this logic when you have less than uh, three additional segments not counting the head obviously because only now you can eat your tail it's kind of hard to be honest yeah we lost we lost so ladies and gentlemen uh, I believe that I have shown you how to create a snake game on your own from the scratch from scratch using nothing more than pure imagination and uh, free will and free time and energy and other resources that you might have spent on uh, going through this whole tutorial if you bear with me if you stayed with me until the end then i would like you to know that i have nothing in particular to give you other than just a pure uh words of i don't know uh, appreciation for finishing this tutorial however it is you that should feel the gratitude of your own hard work jesus that's, i mean my my tutorials are getting more and more philosophical at this point yeah okay i believe that it's a good time to f end this episode so thank you guys for watching and remember always uh, do what the funny youtuber says and drink milk see ya guys Wow, that was close. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my. Do you know if there are any tournaments in Snake game? I mean the classical version, the, the one I'm playing. Like maybe some old Nokia or Motorola phones. Uh, I, I I generally don't know. I'm generally asking. So if you do know, please let me know in the comment section. All right, that would be not nice.
I think that's enough. Can we cut the... <laughs> this nightmarish creature can be felt. It can be beaten. <laughs> 